This is section 3.3, and it is another algebraic method of solving systems by, uh, of equations. And this time, it's the elimination method. It's a pretty simple concept, and so we're going to learn how to do that. And then the B part would be to apply that to actual applications. OK, so when we look at uh, a system of equations like in example number one, and it asks us to solve by elimination. Uh, what is this method really based on? It is really based on the addition method of solving linear equations or other equations. So it was basically like if a equals b and c equals d, then adding to both sides the same quantity then we have a plus c equals b plus d. We stated it originally a little bit differently, and we said if a equals b, and we add c to both sides, we have an equivalent equation. In other words, we have an equation with the same solution set. But since c equals d, uh, this is an equivalent equation. And so we're going to use that basic idea for the elimination method. And here's how it's going to work. So we draw a line. So we add 5x minus 5x, and that, of course, is 0. And 3y and 2y is equal to 5y. And on the right hand side, 17 plus 3 is 20. So now we have one equation and one variable. And we certainly know how to solve that. We divide both sides by 5. So y equals 4. And then we can use any of the other equations to determine what x is. Let's say we use the first equation and we replace y with the number 4. Then we get, from the first equation, we get 5x plus 3 times 4 equals 17. And 3 times 4 is 12. So we have 5x plus 12 equals 17. When we subtract five, uh, 12 on both sides, then we have 5x equals 5. Dividing both sides by 5 tells us that x equals 1. So uh, x equals 1 and y equals 4. That means the ordered pair 1, 4 is a solution for this system of equations. Let us apply the same method to the next exercise. Minus 3a plus 2b equals 0, and 3a minus 4b equals negative 1. So we add these two equations, and minus 3a plus 3a is 0, and 2b minus 4b is minus 2b, and 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Then we divide both sides by negative 2 to isolate b. So b then is equal to minus 1 divided by minus 2, or equal to 1 half. Then we can use any of the other any of the two equations to determine what a is equal to. And I would just use the first equation because it's a simple equation. So we replace b with 1 half. So we have minus 3a plus 2 times 1 half equals 0. So that means minus 3a, 2 times 1 half is 1. So we add it, we subtract it on both sides, equals minus 1 then. 
divided by minus 3, so a equals 1 third. So b equals one half, a equals one third. So the ordered pair one third comma one half is the solution for the system of equations here. Next, let's do the guided solution number three. Solve the solve by the elimination method. 2y plus 3x equals 12, and minus 4y plus 5x equals negative 2. Now, when we simply add these two equations, uh, we wind up with minus 2y plus 8x equals 10, and so we still now, now we have one equation and two variables, so that didn't help. However, if we multiply the first equation by 2, that then becomes a 4y, and a 6x and a 24. We multiply each term by 2. And now when we add the uh, first two terms, 4y minus 4y, we get a 0, which is, so we, in other words, we eliminated y. Then 6x plus 5x, of course, is 11x. And 24 minus 2 is equal to 22. So 11x equals 22. We divide both sides by 11, and so x equals 2. So substituting 2 for x in equation number 1, we could use equation number 2 also, but if we use number 1, then we get 2y plus 3x, and remember x equals 2, so 3 times 2, equals 12, and so we have 2y plus 3 times 2 is 6. We subtract 6 on both sides, so then 2y equals 6. Dividing both sides by 2 uh, gives us an y equals 3. So then the ordered pair would be uh, 2 comma 3. That would be the solution to the given system of equations. Let's do exercise number 4. 4x four plus 5y equals minus 8 and 7x plus 9y equals 11. Well, it doesn't really matter if you multiply one number, uh, one uh, equation by another number. We won't get to if, if figure a number that would eliminate that. But look at it this way. If we multiply the first equation by 7, that gives us a 28 x, of course we get different coefficients here too, but let's just focus on the x. If you multiply the second equation by negative 4, then we get a minus 28x. So let's do that. So let's multiply the first equation by 7, and let's multiply the second equation by negative 4. So that would give us 28x and 7 times 5 is 35y, and 7 times minus 8 is minus 56. And multiplying the second equation by negative 4, negative 4 times 7 is minus 28x, minus 9 times 4 is 36, minus 36y, and minus 4 times 11 is minus 44. And now, when we add the two equations, 28x minus 28x is 0, and 35y minus 36y is minus y, and minus 56 minus 44 is minus 100, 
So y multiplied by minus 1 on both sides tells us that y is equal to 100. Then we, let's say we use the first equation to find out what x is. So in the first equation, we replace y with the number 100. So 4x plus 5 times 100 equals minus 8. So it means that 4x plus 500 equals negative 8. When we subtract 500 on both sides, we get 4x equals minus 508. And when we divide on both sides by 4 to isolate x, we find that x is equal to minus 127. So then the ordered pair minus 127 comma 100 is the solution of the system of equations here. So in other words, sometimes you need to multiply the equations by different numbers. And which one should you use, 4 or 7 or 5 or 9? It's really up to you. 4 and 7 would be the, sm the smaller numbers. And so I like to keep my numbers small, so that's why I chose to eliminate x by multiplying the first equation by 7, the second one by minus 4, to, to eliminate x. And again, there are many different ways to do this also. Let's do exercise number 5 in a similar way, where we multiply the first equation by 7 and the second equation by negative 4. And this way, we'll be eliminating x. So multiplying the first equation by 7 gives us 28x minus 35y equals 266. Multiplying the second equation by negative 4 gives us minus 28x plus 32y equals 88. Minus 4 times minus 22. Now when we add these two equations, 28x minus 28x is 0, and minus 35y plus 32y is minus 3y, and then on the right hand side we get 354. We divide both sides by negative 3, so y is an equal to minus 118. Now to find out what x is, we can use the first equation. We replace y with minus 118. So 4x minus 5 times minus 118 equals 38. So that means 4x plus 590 equals 38. We subtract 590 on both sides, so that means 4x equals negative 552. And by dividing both sides by 4, we find that x is equal to minus 138. So then the ordered pair minus 138 comma 118 minus 118 is the solution set for this system of equations here. So as you can see it's really pretty straightforward once you get the hang of it and it'll probably take a little bit of repetition on your part so you can do these uh, solve these systems of equations using the elimination method. So sometimes people ask, well, what's better, substitution or elimination? Sometimes it depends on the problem. Of course, the answers will be the same. There's not any one method more accurate than the other. The, the solutions are the same. So, um, but as you will see, uh, the elimination method can come in really handy when we talk about other systems of equations with three or more variables. 
But for the time being, let's continue with the elimination method in this section. Exercise 11 is essentially the same thing. So here we are, uh, here we are, it suggested to clear the decimals and then solve. So what we want to do here in the first, for the first equation, we multiply the first equation times 100 to get rid of all the decimals. So that'll give us 2x plus 3y equals 1. And to clear the decimals for the second equation, we just multiply by 10 because there's only one decimal here. So <coughs> excuse me, that'll give us 3x minus 1y or minus y equals 7. Okay, so now what can we do to eliminate one of the variables? Well, we can leave the first equation as it is, 2x plus 3y equals 1. And let's multiply the second equation by 3. And the reason I want to do that is because it'll give me a minus 3y, and then that cancels out the 3y in the first equation. So 3 times 3x is 9x, and 3 times minus y is minus 3y, and 3 times 7 is 21. So when I add these two equations now, I get 9 plus 2 is 11x, I get 0y, and I get 22 on the right-hand side. So when I divide by 11 on both sides, x equals 2. And now I can use any one of the equations to uh, determine y. And let's just say we use um, this equation here. So that means we have three, three x, let's use this equation here. We use three x minus y equals seven. So we replace x with two. So three times two minus y equals seven. So six minus y equals seven. We subtract six on both sides. So minus y equals, equals one. So that means y is equal to minus one. Therefore, the ordered pair two comma minus one is a solution of the given system of equations. So two comma minus one. So exercise number seven uh, is similar. We are asked to clear the fractions and then solve the system. So the way we clear the fractions, we multiply by the LCD of five and three in the denominator. So that means the LCD is 15. So we multiply the first equation by 15. That means we multiply each term by 15. So 15 times three is 45 divided by five would be 9x, and 2 times 15 is 30, and 30 divided by 3 is 10y, and 15 times 1 is 15, divided by 3 is equal to 5. So that's our first equation. Now the LCD for the second equation would be 12, so that means we multiply each term by 12. And 12 times 3 is 36, divided by 4 would be 9x. And 12 times 1 is, 1 is 12, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. So, but there's a minus sign, so we have minus 4y. And then on the right-hand side, 12 times 1 is 12, and 12 divided by 4 is equal to 3. So now we need to work on these two equations, and you look at the 9x here, and so, so if we could multiply, or if we multiply one of the equations by minus 1, then uh, we could eliminate the variable x. 
So let's leave the first equation the way it is. 9x plus 10y equals 5. And let's multiply the second equation by negative 1. So negative 1 times 9x is minus 9x. And minus 1 times minus 4y is plus 4y. And minus 1 times 3 is negative 3. So now we add these two equations. We get 0 here for the first term, 0x. And um, 10y and 4y is 14 is 14y and 5 minus 3 is 2 so then y divided by 14 on both sides y would be 2 fourteenths or 1 seventh so now we can use that value for y and substitute that into one of the equations and uh, so we can just use, let's say, the uh, second equation here. So we use we have 9x minus 4 times y, and y is equal to 1 seventh, and that equals 3. So we have 9x equals 3 plus 4 sevenths. So there would be 21 sevenths plus, 24 se uh, plus 4 sevenths. 3 equals 21 sevenths. So 9x equals 25 divided by 7. So now we divide both sides by 9. So x is equal to 25 divided by 7 divided by 9 or 25 divided by 63. So then the ordered pair 25 divided by 63 comma one seventh is the solution set of the given system of equations that we have here. So let me write it next to the given set of system of equations. Twenty five divided by sixty three comma one seventh. So this ordered pair is the solution of the system of equations. So here's some general principles for using elimination method to solve systems of two equations. Number one, write both equations in the form of ax plus b y equals c and clear any decimals or fractions and we just did this in the previous two examples. Then choose a variable to eliminate and then make the chosen variable's terms opposite by multiplying one or both equations by appropriate numbers if necessary. And we've done that a few times. And then eliminate a variable by adding the respective sides of the equations and then solve for the remaining variable. And then, as before, substitute in either of the original equations to find the value of the other variable. So again, it just restates what we've been doing here for quite a bit. And so the following example shows uh, another, yeah, another, well, it's basically another example how to do this. So here we have two uh, equations, y plus 2x equals 3 and y plus 2x equals minus 1. So when we multiply the second equation by minus 1 and add, then again, the first equation is still y plus 2x equals 3. But the second equation becomes minus y minus 2x and then plus 1 because minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1. So now when we add the two equations, we find that y minus 1, y is 0, and 2x minus 2x is 0. So the whole left-hand side is 0. 
But on the right hand side, we have 3 plus 1, and that of course is 4. And so that equation is plainly false. And we've had this before when we did the uh, substitution method. And that means when we wind up with this situation here with a false equation, then the system has no solutions. Has no solution. And that makes sense. Here's the reason why. When we write each of these equations in slope intercept form, in other words, we subtract 2x on both sides, and the first equation is y equals minus 2x plus 3, and the second equation becomes y equals minus 2x minus 1. So we notice the slopes are the same, so we know the lines are parallel, and also the y-intercepts are different. So the lines are parallel, and parallel lines don't intersect. They don't, in other words, that system doesn't have any solution. That's kind of verify. This kind of verifies it that there's no solution. Okay. Similarly, let's look at the other uh, system of equations here, number nine, and solve by the elimination method. So what we can do here is um, we can multiply, for example, the first equation by three. And leave the second equation the way it is. So the second equation, well, okay, let's multiply the first equation by 3. We get 6x minus 15y equals 30. And the second equation was minus 6x plus 15y minus 30. So we didn't do anything to the second equation, but we multiplied the first equation by 3. So we left the second equation alone. So now, when we add the two sides, we get minus 6 plus 6 is 0, and minus 15y plus 15y is also 0, so we get 0 on the left side, and then 30 minus 30 is also 0. Now this is a true equation. And so, again, we've seen this before when we talked about the substitution method, and so in this case we have infinitely many solutions infinitely many solutions. If we graph these two equations, it would be one line. It would be, okay? So these, these uh, equations are linearly dependent, or that, that's a dependent system. And the factor is simply three, or minus three. This table here compares the different methods and the strengths and weaknesses. And so when we have a graphic solution, we can see the solution right away. But it's inexact when the solutions involve numbers that are not integers. And even if they are integers, it's sometimes difficult to see. And they may not even appear in the graph that you have drawn. But it's, it's a visual solution. Then when you use substitution, it yields an exact solution. It's convenient to use when a variable has a coefficient of 1. And it can introduce extensive computations with fractions, and we cannot see the solutions quickly. And then the elimination method yields exact solutions. It's convenient to use when no variable has a coefficient of 1. And notice this, the preferred method, this is the preferred method for systems of three or more equations and three or more variables. So we look at that in a little bit here. Again, we cannot see the solution quickly when we use elimination. But again, we'll look at the elimination method again when we talk about systems of equations with three or more variables. Let's look at an example an applied problem using elimination. And so here, uh, Monica gives each of the full-time employees in a small business a year-end bonus of $500, but each part-time employee receives $250. She gave a total of $4,000 in bonuses to her 10 employees. How many full-time employees and how many part-time employees did Monica have? Okay, so let's just pick some variables. X, let's say, is the number of 
uh, full-time employees, number of full-time employees. And let's say Y is the number of part-time employees. So then, first of all, we know that the, he has 10 employees all together, so we know that x plus y equals 10. And if each of the full-time employees gets a $500 bonus, that means 500 times x, that would be the number of full-time employees getting a $500 bonus, and then 250 times the number of part-time employees to get a bonus, and all that adds up to $4,000. Okay, so these are the two equations that define our problem here. And so what we can do is a number of ways we can do this, but we can multiply the first equation by minus 250. And here's the reason why. That'll help me eliminate the variable y. So minus 250 times x is minus 250x, and minus 250 times y is minus 250y, and minus 250 times 10 is minus 2500. So now when we add the two equations, 500x minus 250x is 250x, and 250y minus 250y is 0, and 4000 minus 2500 is 1500, 1500, and when we divide, now 250x equals 1500, dividing both sides by 250, that means x would be equal to so six full-time employees. And from the first equation, we know that um, y equals 10 minus x, so that would be y equals 10 minus 6, so then y equals 4. So y equals four part-time employees. So it's a very simple application in this case. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, so again, it just takes practice to do the basic ones and then to do application problems. As always, word problems take a little bit of practice, but the more you do, the easier it will get for you. And this concludes section 3.3. .3.